Hey guys, Damon at Black Warrior Lures. Wanted to show you how I make my harnesses. Here we are back here in Madman Labs. Uh, we've been experimenting with some new concepts. They're not new, they're just modifications of things I've been doing for a long time. This is probably the ugliest fly I've ever made. These are some of the new things. And you've guys seen some of the uh, other, you know, things like this that I've made. And this one's missing a, a wing. Uh, I got a lot of people look at that and they say there's a lot going on with that. You know, I'm just missing the wing there because it just came off. I didn't glue it down and it came off, but uh, the poly darters. But the basis of it all is the uh, harness. Um, I'm about to go bluegill fishing tomorrow up on the lake and uh, we're going to make us up some more harnesses. Uh, a tipping harness that I call it or a tip rig, you know, where you can... This is the basis of all my flies here. I mean, I start with this and then build whatever I want off of that. And you can do this with any size hook, you know, big hook, small hook, salt water, fresh water. It's sort of a combination of a walleye crawler harness with, uh, with what fly fishermen call a dropper, uh, you know, thing where they have a popper rig and then about two, three feet back they have a small midge or something. And so I just took all that and then, uh, you know, and, and a lot of crappie fishermen like to use big, thick Aberdeen hooks because they want to add a live bait or like maggots or night crawlers or something onto their um, on the hook. So they need a big gap. But what I figure is that what I found, at least for me, is that just have two hooks, uh, uh, a tandem hook. So, so here's a tandem hook rig. Here I'm using number 10 uh, 3366 hooks. Here's a number two and a number four. Um, you could use it with any size hook. Generally, I want the hooks to be either the same size or let the front hook be bigger than the back. Other than that, just give me something with straight eyes on it. I don't like all these bent eyes. You start out here, uh, just put five wraps there then we come here like I have here we're back in the mass what I call madman labs typically I'll just go through this is 35 pound test mono uh, if you're really worried I'd, I recommend 50 is what I normally use the only reason I'm using the the, the high viz here because uh, I had a customer or a subscriber mail me this so I've been he mailed me for catfishing but I use it for tying flies because I ran out of 50 pound tests and I've been using this ever since so you know what you do is you just you know you can just sit here and you know get a lot of it and I always keep I usually keep a variety of lines set up set here I usually have some 35 some 20 and and I usually spool my rods up off this thing as well a little bit of tape there so it can get all messy so you take your line this is about uh, you, this is like twice as long as it needs to be and so what you're gonna do is put the line here hoping that the light there doesn't quite blind anyone one two so this is a very super glue heavy uh, rig and um, put a just a little stream there and uh, try to keep the camera steady and uh, on the way back no need for touching turns or anything just kind of get it down and then on the way back up touching turns all the way back up there and so basically this is like snelling the hook except uh, instead of snelling it I just super gluing it and and that and if you really want you could put red thread here and use sparkly thread whatever you want to use a uh, couple of half hitches is all enough because the super glue is holding everything so one or two half hitches and, you, and you're good to go and so there's your um, well, there's that, and so typically I can just take that, set it here on the super glue. I have some already pre-made, and we'll use them instead because it's, you know I typically want to let those dry first. And these are the same uh, corks that I use to make my floats with. I also use them to as fly drying thingies. Next thing is some uh, four millimeter beads. Um, typically, I usually have a few just. See, I've experimented with rattles, 
and I experiment with the beads. I prefer the beads. They, they're, they're easier to do. I found I've used three beads, four beads, five beads. Three beads seems to be the magic number. So that's what we're going to go with. Okay, so three beads. You just slip it right onto here. Slip it on. Um, well, if you can, sometimes they're not quite open all the way, and you just have to uh, work with it there. One, un, deux, et trois, trois, three, and there's your the rear part of the harness. Now here's the magic of this. That's going to add some visual to it. Um, so we put the uh, the main hook on now. This main hook could be bigger. Four, five wraps like that. I always go with five wraps. Uh, but I'm going to make them the same size because I'm just doing some bluegill fishing. And what you want to do, the magic with these beads is you want to have at least one bead worth of gap between the end of the bead and the beginning of the of the curve of the hook. So. And what that's gonna do is give you your. Um, that's gonna make that's gonna make a rattle. That's gonna make it rattle. It's gonna send out more noise. Oh come on! Gathering loop. One, two, three. There's a couple of wraps there. That's it. I don't do all this laying down base of thread and all that junk. That just wastes thread. Don't do all that. Just a couple of wraps, secure it, and then you know, CA glue is your friend. And uh, again, no need for touching turns on the way down but on the way back up touching turns there's that you know you can do half hitches but I'll just show you the whip finish so there's one I always start my flies with a half hitch and then one oh come on two three four Five, if you wanted to whip finish, there's no need, you know. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I am hoping you're getting a lot of that and not um, hoping the camera. I'm gonna see, have to see how that turns out. And that's it, guys. That that's the that's the harness. That's the. You may not be able to hear that now. This is obviously louder. But hey, but that's it's more subtle. And it's putting scent off in the water, and you look at that harness, and, um, you know, you've got this thing, you know, it, it never lays down at perfectly 90 degrees. Sometimes it's curbed or reversed. Sometimes it's straight up. Um, it just doesn't matter. Just as long as it's not in the same plane as the main hook. I mean, you have a double hook here, and that can uh, really um, help your hookup rates and things like that. Uh, every time I design this, mostly as a trolling sort of rig if you can see uh, you know this one that, that where the hair came out you know I have a streamer things coming over here same thing right these eyes you know help do that but what we're doing here you know as compared to a, a streamer that a lot of say crappie fishermen would use something more like this there's no noise at all and you got the hook there and you got a nice big gap there, but there, you know, a lot of flash, a lot of, but there's no vibration. And what if they're short striking? What are you going to do? Well, if you have something like this, <laughs> they're short striking, where well, you're going to catch them. And I've caught more fish on that stinger hook than anything. And all that rattle there gives me uh, noise. And so that is the uh, Black Warrior Lures tip rig or tandem rig, tandem harness. Here's what it looks like before I actually tie on. I have this one now this one's tied wrong okay uh, there there should be at least again one gap of space between the last ball and the and the sort of the curve of the hook here so so that you can get the rattle but we don't get the rattle with this one and again we would just set it right there and we'd be tying right onto there like that and these are just two number four sprout hooks they must have 3366 or just sprout hook so you can uh, you can use a limerick here um, you know just a good basic uh, for all intents and purposes J hook I mean there is no you know 
people just lump all basic hooks like this into J-hook, but there's lots of different styles of hooks like this. You know, and, and, uh, and again, you have the stinger, <clears throat> the main hook, and uh, the beads. And for here, this is a good basis of a, of a streamer pattern that I could make a Mickey fan with, I can make eels with, I can make what it leeches, whatever I want. And um, and again, then you have the uh, what we're doing it for a very different purpose here, which is um, just as a tipping rig where I could put a couple of black soldier flies here, a couple of them here, a little bit of visual, a little bit of sound as I'm dragging the line across the bottom of the riverbed and sending out more vibration a little bit more uh, visuals and then hopefully with the double rig we can get, catch the short, short striking fish especially when the wind is up and sorts of things like that uh, it's best to make up about 10 or 12 of these 10 15 20 100 even this is 50 pound test monofilament here uh, and this is a number eight uh, sprout hook here again I, I like a limerick as well but just any of the classic uh, J type hooks will be fine you know preferably a sprout or a limerick because they just have better penetrating power because of the length of the shank and the angle and all that kind of thing um, and there you go let me know what you think try it incorporate these into your flies your jigs your lures and uh, go check out uh, what was the name of the website <laughs> bigbluegill.com uh, some good guys on there doing a lot of good things. So uh, I will talk to you guys later.